Hi all, thanks for tuning in. Um, as usual, I'm I'm jumping into the deep end on something I don't I don't entirely uh, know how to talk about. But what the heck, uh, it never stopped me before. So here we go. I wanted to tell you about my latest dream, which has echoes of another dream, and then ties into some other um, like sort of current thinking about where the world is at, um, meaning specifically that we are at the end of a major cycle in human history on earth and that we are perhaps on the edge of the next big cycle of history on earth. And um, apparently you, you've heard this from the psychics, other psychics on YouTube and, and probably lots of thinkers and it's been expressed in lots of different ways, but we are in a, a time period of great disruption on earth. You've got, all these things that are happening at once that are disruptive. Everything from the COVID-19 to uh, fragile democratic institutions to extreme climate change um, and concerns about the future of the planet and the future of human beings on the planet. And some of these things, these ideas seem to have been expressed in religious texts in some form or in other belief systems that um, you know, if you take it to a, to, to, a, to a great extreme, that end times and things like that, or the rapture, which I do not believe in. Um, but what I do believe from, again, the YouTube psychics and just sort of my own feeling and sense of things, and I think, I think most of you who would happen to watch this would agree that we seem to be at the end of a, per of a period. But what I think is going to happen is it's not going to be the end of times. It's going to be the beginning of the next era. And that these are in some ways the, um, the, the, pain, the painful last days of the, old, of the old before the new can come in and make things better. And so the restlessness that a lot of individuals are feeling, that we each sometimes feel, but really in the collective is really strong. Um, everything from just, um, from January 6th, from the coming of the last president, um, to even the horrific, um, you know, disaster at the parade in, uh, I believe, Wisconsin, um, where, you know, a driver mows down pedestrians in a parade, just something completely horrific because people who, lack um, a lot of people who lack grounding or who lack focus or who lack a sense of purpose or just have too many other problems are, are essentially being triggered by, by, by how intense this period of time is and how many burdens there are on mankind. So it's a hard time to live. Um, income inequality is just another one. Um, racial unrest and confrontation like these are they're all happening at the same time and it does feel like a unique period uh i can't i'm sure there were other periods in human history where they thought oh my god this is you know um the the end of of one time and the beginning of another like maybe say the industrial beginning of the industrial age but this this has to be one of them it just it just feels so much that way so that's the setup. Now, having said all that, none of this was on my mind when um, the night I had the dream. And when I had the dream that I'm about to describe, it didn't actually seem to have anything to do with this at first. And I kind of kind of pondered what it was all about. And I think only now am I feeling like there may be some connection. So you can, of course, decide for yourself too. So, if you have watched my videos on a regular basis, then you know that I recently had a levitation dream that I described. And I've had levitation dreams before and flying dreams, but this, this levitation, more recent levitation dream was different in that when I was off the ground, I ended up sitting in, in um, the lotus position, cross-legged, and then inadvertently started to turn um, while in midair, which is something that has never happened before. And I pondered whether that had any meaning and I really couldn't attribute anything to it. I just thought, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know what that is. But in this new dream from a couple nights ago, 
there were so many dreams that night, but this is the only one I can really pull out of the soup and remember the visuals, even though I don't remember that much. I, I remember again that I was beginning to levitate and thinking, oh, this is familiar. And as I began to levitate, I was rising really right up to the ceiling. And what was strange about it was when I looked around, then I realized that there were a lot of people levitating at the same time as me. They were all around me, whereas usually I'm alone. I would say at least a dozen that I could see just in this one room. But there's more. <laughs> Not only were we levitating, but we were rotating in the air, like in my other dream. And not only were we levitating and rotating, but when we began to rotate, we were no longer, we no longer appeared to be fully human. We looked like, um, almost like circles, like complete circles. Like, um, and the first thing I thought of when like, oh, you know, almost like floating, rotating donuts, except, more human sized. And the first thing I thought of when I woke up was something that my neighbor Rose, who is very psychic, told me about last year and that I may have mentioned in a previous video. She said that she had a vision, uh, still during the reign of the last president, of, of Quetzalcoatl, which is not something I'm familiar with or wasn't until she mentioned it. So I'll show you the spelling. Oh, you can't see it on my phone. Um, Quetzalcoatl, um, it is um, Spanish, and it is spelled Q-U-E-T-Z-A-L-C-O-A-T-L, Quetzalcoatl. And what it is, is a, it says, and I'm reading from Wikipedia, a Mesoamerican deity, like an Aztec deity. And he takes the form of a serpent. And apparently in some, uh, in the vision that my, my neighbor Rose had, she saw Quetzalcoatl, this deity serpent of Aztec culture. And we're talking about from, I looked it up, about the 1300s to the 1500s um, in Mexico. This serpent eats its own tail. But what that really means is it, it creates a circle with its own body. So imagine, you know, imagine, imagine a serpent that, that bites its own tail and then the shape that it makes is a circle, which is very similar to the wheel of fate or wheel of fortune in tarot. And so Rose, my neighbor, saw this symbol of the Quetzalcoatl rotating in the sky. And when we talked about it one time, we agreed our, our co-interpretation of it was that it was like another sign of um, the Wheel of Fortune turning in one era coming to a close and signaling the next great era, the next big era. So that's kind of where my hat is at on it. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that some of you watching know more about Quetzalcoatl than I do because I know almost nothing. Um, I don't know if this will show up or not. Let's see. This is, a uh, yeah, it's very light on screen, but this is like an illustration of him, um, more in a not quite human form as opposed to the serpent form. Let me see if there's a serpent illustration. Uh, no. But let me read you a little bit from uh, Wikipedia about it. Um, so Quetzalcoatl um, uh, is a deity in Aztec culture and literature whose name comes from the Nahuatl language and means precious serpent or Quetzal feathered serpent. Um, Uh, in the 17th century, a descendant of Aztec royalty, who was also his, a historian of the Na, Nahua people, wrote Quetzalcoatl in its literal sense, means spirit of precious feathers. 
but in the allegorical sense, wisest of men. So it's like a god of um, Aztec culture. There's a little more below. Uh, I won't read too much more of this. Um, so among the Aztecs, again, 1300 to 1500, whose beliefs are the best documented in the historical sources, Quetzalcoatl was related to the gods of the wind, of the planet Venus, of the dawn, of merchants and of arts, crafts, and knowledge. He was also a patron god of the Aztec priesthood of learning and knowledge. Sep was one of several important gods in the Aztec pantheon and uh, was the god of, let's see, again, this repeats a little, god of the sun and wind and air and learning. And um, let's see. Oh, okay. Um, He was the god of the sun and wind, air and learning, and wears around his neck the wind breastplate, which I can't pronounce, Etzel, uh, 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 I can't even pronounce this word, but if you look up the Wikipedia entry for Quetzalcoatl, you'll find it. Who wears around his neck a wind breastplate um, made of a conch shell. This talisman was a conch shell cut at the cross section and was likely worn as a necklace by religious rulers um, and potentially symbolized patterns witnessed in hurricanes, dust devils, sea shells, and whirlpools that were elemental forces that had significance in Aztec mythology. Um, let's see. There was something specific that I wanted to mention that I can no longer find because I don't want to drag this out. Okay, here it is. Okay, to the Aztec, Quetzalcoatl was, as the name indicates, a feathered serpent. He was a creator deity, having contributed essentially to the creation of mankind. Okay, so um, I know nothing, again, about Aztec religions or beliefs, but what I do believe is that all the major religions and belief systems of the world um, end up in the end, talking about the same things, they just use different terms, and they have different um, symbolic, you know, figureheads, and um, you know, like in Christianity, obviously it's Jesus and Mother Mary and, and things like that, and in the Quran, it's uh, Muhammad. But to me, these these religions are all hinting at the same things, and most religions hint at at um, you know, a kind of disruptive time on earth that, um, where things seem to be almost dire. And then what follows is some kind of ascension. And some people, like I said, interpret that as a, um, you know, the end of times on earth, but I don't, I, I, I just, that's just my personal feeling that that we come up, that we will come out of this period of disruption, but make no mistake that it is a period of great disruption and great change and great stress, but that what comes next will be the, 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 the beginning of the better world. And how long that takes, I, I couldn't say. I have astrologer friends who believe that the age of Aquarius is also the signpost for the, for the better future to come and depending on who you talk to some of them say that that has started some of them say it starts in the next couple of years um so but we're we seem to be right on top of it so when you feel um stressed or or distressed by by a lot of the chaos that's going on in the world um i i feel like you want to as much as you can um and as needed, step back from that news and step back from that energy and don't feed it with distress, feed it or feed it with stress and worry as much as is possible because that will only create more of the same. Um, you can't do it every day. We don't succeed at this every day. But I'm so curious because I've never, I've, I have no connection personally to Quetzalcoatl unless perhaps in a previous existence I lived maybe as an Aztec or, or somewhere else where there was a lot of um, um, strong spiritual or, or religious spiritual you know energies or or believers um, and I was somehow a part of that in in the past 
um, which might be possible because I, uh, again, I had a, a, a same astrologer fr friend that I mentioned before who gave me a reading one time that said that I had lived many lives, um, I guess, in, in spiritual pursuits, among other things, and that always the arts and, and creativity were tied into that. And that resonated with me pretty well without my having to feel like I needed to know exactly the details of that because I don't know if you can know and it doesn't really matter because I, I just say I'm going to focus on where and who I am now and, and do the best I can to contribute to, you know, making my, my, my sphere of influence better than it is if I can improve it if I can. So, but it was so strange to, it really was strange to be in this new dream and then suddenly find myself rising to the ceiling and then realizing that I had reached all the way to the top of the ceiling, but that I wasn't even really fully me anymore. I was like a circular mass. Like it was still, I was still like, uh, I still had flesh and bones, but it was like, um, I had sort of, um, uh, like silly putty, you know, been shaped into a rotating circle. And, and so were all these other humans who were on the ceiling with me. <laughs> so maybe that speaks to something, uh, maybe that somehow speaks to like the collective, especially among us sensitives of picking up on this energy and being aware of this energy and maybe in some sense even helping to move the process of moving into the new world along, um, the new and hopefully better world along. Um, I don't exactly know, but it, it it does, I can't ignore this one entirely as just random because I've never thought about Quetzalcoatl except for twice in my life when Rose mentioned it and when I had this dream. The one thing I'm trying to remember from the dream is whether we were rotating clockwise or counterclockwise. I wish I could be sure about that. I don't know if we, it's of significance. It seemed like when I woke up, my recollection was counterclockwise, like in the other dream I had that I described in, an, in the previous video from a couple weeks back. But in Rose's vision, when she looked in the sky and saw like a sort of Quetzalcoatl spinning as the serpent swallowing its own tail, it was forward. Um, well, I mean, you're looking at me backwards. So from your point of view, it's clockwise, just like the Wheel of Fortune in in tarot, where, you know, you're on top for a time and then you, you slide under in time. Because, like, uh, I think in that card in the Rider Waite tarot, the devil is underneath. Like, he's sort of, his time has passed. And there are better better forces at the top of the wheel representing the you know the 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 better future so that's all i've got um and as is often the case i feel like i've said a lot and maybe i've said nothing at the same time <laughs> so uh that's why as usual your feedback would be welcome um and you may you may very well know a heck of a lot more about um Aztec deities than I do because I know basically nothing and maybe my dream maybe my dream really has nothing to do with that but I kind of think it does because circular circular um, levitating spiritual beings all in a room together I don't know guess who Gabe's here hi buddy come here so uh, I'm going to go leave it at that and hope to see you again soon. I hope you and yours have a terrific Thanksgiving and um, stay safe and stay, stay well. The rates here in the Northeast for, for COVID are, are definitely going up. Um, we're all vaccinated in my family, so, you know, hoping for the best. But we have gone back to an indoor mask mandate in um, the Buffalo, New York area after not having one for, for all of the summer and early fall. So it's, it's, it's mirroring the pattern from last year somewhat. And uh, we'll, have to, uh, we'll have to get through, because we have to. 
Okay, uh, again, happy Thanksgiving, take care, and uh, be well.